Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the first vlog of 2023. This will be the last vlog to conclude my Vegas trip. This will be a 5-10-20 game at the Win and Aria, so I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so to start this vlog off, we're going to be playing 5, 10, 20 at the win. The very first hand we get is Ace, 8 of spades. The cutoff opens to 50, and I call. The straddle also calls, and we go three ways to the flop. The flop is Jack, 8, 3, two spades and one heart. We both check to the cutoff, and he C bets $60. Now, I'm not going anywhere with a nut flush draw, so I make the call. The straddle gets out of our way, and we go to a turn, heads up. The turn is one of the best cards I can hope for. It's the eight of clubs, and I check once again, and he casually throws out a bet of $170. Now I need to start getting the money in now so I can start setting up a pot sized river jam. So I check raise him to $400. He asks for a count of my stack before making the call. The river is the queen of clubs, and I waste no time and pretty much go all in for $1,200. He folds, and this exchange takes place. Show the block. <laughs> he asked me to show the bluff. I cheekily flash him the ace of spades, hoping to throw him off into thinking I have a flush draw. But as you can see here, he's definitely suspicious of me having ace eight specifically. All right, for the next hand, two players are on break, so we're four-handed here. We get dealt King Jack offsuit on the straddle. The small blind opens to $60, and I decide to take the more aggressive route. I three bet to 180, and he makes the call. The flop is 854 rainbow, and on a flop like this where it doesn't really hit me as the three better, it's generally okay to just check. Villain is much more likely to have sets here as a majority of low and middling pocket pairs would just call and not 3-bet. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean you need to check this flop every time it comes up. You should at least bet some of the times or else you will get exploited. And I decide this time is the time to go for it. I bet $80 as a c-bet to try to take down the pot and plan to give up if I get called. But he's having none of that. He check raises me to $250. I wanted to be done with the hand anyway, so it's an easy decision for me to just move on to the next hand. For the next 4 hands or so, I'm just going to go into rapid fire mode since this session was pretty dry in general, but I promise it does get really good a little bit later. So the table's finally filling up, it's 7 handed, and we get deuces on the straddle. Small blind limps, big blind opens for 100, I call because I have position, and the small blind also calls, we go 3 ways to the flop. The flop comes king 8 4 rainbow. The only card we want to see on the flop is a deuce. It's not there, so when the big blind C bets $150, we both fold. Alright, really quickly, next time we're dealt pocket force on the button and I open for $40. The big blind 3 bets to $200 and I make the call for set mining in position. The flop comes ace 5 3, 2 clubs and 1 spade. He bets $50, which is a really tiny bet. So I call to try to hit a deuce for a straight or four for a set. The turns a nine of diamonds and that card seems to scare him because he checks. So now I'm pretty sure he doesn't have an ace still. I only have a pair of fours. It's got a bit of showdown value. I'm gonna check back. And the river is a three of hearts and he checks once again. I think about bluffing for a sec, but I still think I have some showdown equity with my pocket fours, so I'm not going to bluff here. I'm going to check back and hope we're good, and unfortunately we're not. He shows pocket tens. That's another pot. We lose. Alrighty, you guys got through it. The boring hands are finally over, so I'm going to start slowing down a bit. We add on $1,000 to top up our stack, even though we're only down 500 bucks. We're dealt queen nine of spades under the gun plus one. We make a standard open to $40, and the cutoff 3 bets us to $140. Normally, Queen 9 suited is a fold here, but I've been pretty card dead, so I decide to play this one. I make the call. 
Going heads up to the flop, it comes jack seven deuce two tone. I check as I would my entire range here, and he likes the idea, he checks back as well. The turn comes to ace of hearts, and we don't improve, so we check, and I expect villain to bet a lot on this card, even as a bluff, since it's such a good card for him, but he checks back once again. The reverse of four clubs, which doesn't really help me, but it doesn't really help him either. The fact that he checked the turn makes me suspect that he doesn't have an ace. He could have a jack here or a pocket pair. So if I bluff, he could be calling with those, but he also has a ton of hands like king queen or queen 10 suited, hands like those that can't really call a bet. So I decide to actually go for a bluff here. I bet $100 and he snap folds. So we finally win a small pot, but we still can't seem to hit anything. We're still down about $400 and it's almost time for dinner. So I got some work to do. Alrighty, now for the very last hand of the session before dinner. I finally get an amazing hand. I get pocket aces under the gun. This is my last chance to try to break even or book a win. I open for $40 and UTG plus one, three bets me to $160. Folds around back to me and this might be my big chance to get unstuck. He's 3-betting me from UTG plus 1, and he's 3-betting on UTG raise. Assuming his range is fairly strong, I 4-bet to $350. I'm praying he 5-bet jams me with a hand like ace-king or kings, but instead, he snap folds. Couldn't get much value with aces, in a good spot. It's too bad. I think it's time for dinner. Overall, it's a dry session, but it wasn't too bad. I'm only down $142. My buddy and I head to an all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue restaurant, which is perfect for a mental reset. After, we head our way to the Aria for a second session. Okay, let's get you guys updated on the situation. The first half of the session got corrupted. I'm currently in for about 3,200 after losing a little bit early on and needed to top up. I ended up stacking a reg, so now I'm sitting with about 4,100 and I'm up about $900. We now get into a pretty interesting hand. We are dealt Ace King on the straddle. Under the gun, who's a solid reg, limps, and that's a huge red flag for me. The button also limps, and the small blind opens for $300. Normally, I would 3-bet here all day long, but under the gun's limp just threw me off so much that I ended up just flatting the $300, hoping UTG folds or flats the 300 going multi-way. Of course, me flatting just sets him up to do what I didn't want him to do. He limp raises to $1,300, folds around back to the small blind who promptly folds, and here I think about it for a bit and decide to just wait for a better spot and burn $300. I probably should have just 3-bet the small blind myself, but I just had a feeling UTG had aces here and was playing the table dynamic trying to exploit the player in the small blind. I don't know, probably a bad play, but we're gonna move on. Shaking off that hand from earlier, we get ace 5 of hearts in the small blind. UTG limps, hijack and button also limps, and I limp too, I never trust the UTG limp. Straddle checks, and we go five ways to the flop. The flop comes ace, eight, six, two clubs and one diamond, and I have top pair. I check, UTG puts out a bet of $30, folds to the button, he calls, and I also call, and we're going three ways to the turn. The turns to ace of spades, which doesn't really improve our hand. If we were behind on the flop, we're still behind, and if we were ahead, we're still ahead. I don't really put anyone on 8-6. The only good thing about this ace is that the under the gun player that limped pre-flop can't have aces now, which means he doesn't really have too many aces left in his range. I check, and the UTG proceeds to bet $90, and the button calls. I make a pretty unorthodox play here. I check raise to $300, mostly trying to just charge a flush draw. Normally, I would just call here, but I do get the result I'm hoping for. They both fold, and we pick up this pot. This next hand is a disaster, and it starts right at the pre-flop, where I accidentally limp 
ace eight of hearts because I thought I was the third blind. Small blind opens for 120, big blind calls, strato calls, and here sometimes I think I can limp three bet and try to rep aces, especially with the ace in my hand, but I decide not to compound my mistakes any further and I just call to see a flop cheaply. We end up going four ways to the flop and it comes king, six deuce, two hearts and one diamond. And it's not bad for us. We have a nut flush draw. Everyone checks to me and I take the free card. I also check. Turns to five of clubs. The small blind checks and now the big blind bets out $220. Straddle folds and here I decide to make a play. I put in a raise. I can easily have a lot of small sets here. Most people that do have a limping range do so with pocket pairs. And if I get called, I can still hit my nut flush. So I raise it up to $600, hoping he would fold, but he does make the call and now we need a heart. And unfortunately, we miss our flush. The river's a deuce of clubs. He checks, and while I did miss my flush draw, I can still rep some strong hands here like bolts. I don't necessarily have to make a big bet here while bluffing, so I go for a small bet of $460, trying to make it look like I'm getting value from a smaller hand like a pocket pair. He thinks about it for a bit, but unfortunately, he doesn't believe me. He makes the hero call and shows up with pocket nines. Well, that just sucks. I thought he might fold a hand like nines, but maybe I should have went a little bit bigger. And for this next hand, we get ace jack of clubs in the strato. The hijack opens for $50, the button calls, and I'm gonna three bet to $240. They both call and we had three ways to the flop. The flop is beautiful. It comes ace, ace, three, two spades and one diamond. I flop trips and neither of them should have ace king here or else they would have four bet me pre-flop. Right now, I'm only losing to ace queen suited I feel like ace queen off should fold to my three bet here. So since I have the best hand, I feel like I should be C betting here. I C bet $220, the hijack calls and the button folds. We're gonna go heads up to the turn. The turn's a seven of spades, which is a bit concerning because it completes the flush, but I'm not too worried. I still, however, decide to check this turn to disguise my hand a bit and maybe induce a bluff. He also will be more likely to call me on the river with a hand like tens and jacks. It's kind of hard for me to get three streets of value anyway. So I check and he checks back. The river's a seven of diamonds and now we river a boat. We're beating a flush and I bet $640, hoping a flush calls. But when villain snap calls me, I already know we're chopping the pot. He shows ace 10 of hearts and we do end up splitting it. Here we pick up 7 8 of clubs. I open $50 from UTG plus 1, and hands like suited connectors don't play well early position, so be wary of playing these too often. In fact, GTO says I should only open here 8% of the time. But I'm still steaming from my stupid mistake two hands ago, so what the hell. The straddle calls, and we go heads up to the flop. The flop comes jack 6 6, 2 diamonds and 1 club and he checks. Now this flop is a paired board and he shouldn't have a six too often. So I'm gonna C bet here with some backdoor flush draws and some backdoor straight draws. I C bet $30 and he just check calls. The turn's a very interesting card. It's the five of clubs, which now brings me a up and down straight flush draw. He checks and I'm gonna continue barreling here. I bet $80 and he check raises me to $220. No way am I gonna fold an up and down straight flush draw. I call the $220 and we're gonna see a river. The river is a complete brick. It's the ace of spades and he bets out $500. Now, an ace is actually still in my range here and he still bet $500. This tells me he's super strong. I don't think about it, I just fold and he's nice enough to show me his hand. He actually defended his straddle with jack six offsuit. Man, you deserve this one. We started the second half of this session up $900 and now we're down $1,200. But we have a chance to make it all back. We get aces under the gun and there's a big cannon on the table with a 100% V-pip 
and a 100% PFR. This means he plays every hand and raises every hand. So I decide to set a trap. I limp under the gun. Normally, I wouldn't do this unless there's a good special circumstance to do so, and this is one of them. I get three limpers, and this is normal when there's a big cannon on the table. Everyone wants to play them pulse flop, and I'm hoping the straddle now raises here. I don't want to go four ways with aces, and he takes the bait. The cannon makes it $170, and I pull off the scummiest move of all the poker. Yes, that's right, I limp raise to $500. Of course, all the other players that limped now knows what's up, they all fold, and the cannon calls. I expected him to do so, he loves seeing flops, we're gonna go heads up to a flop. The flop comes king 10 5, two spades and one club. I have the ace of spades as an emergency backup plan if needed, he checks, and checking here seems a little bit too trappy, I bet $400 expecting him to call with anything at all, be it bottom pair, straight draw, flush draw, but it seems like he didn't catch any of that, he folds. I wish I could have won more, but still, I won $600 from that hand, so it's not too bad. We're just gonna have to fight to break even. We finally get to the last hand we're gonna cover, and it's the GTO hand of the day. It's also the highlight of this vlog. We get Ace King in the cutoff, and we open to $50. The big blind three bets us to $220, the straddle folds, and here we four bet to $580. He asks for a chip count. And if he goes all in here, I'm just gonna have to call it off, but he does actually make the call and we go to a flop, heads up. The flop comes 753 rainbow, and this board should hit neither of us in a 4-bet pot, so I bet $340 because that's what I'd do if I had a hand like aces or kings. I leave myself with roughly a pot size jam on the turn, and he makes the call. The turns the 5 of hearts, and I consider my options. I could give up here and check, hoping he checks back, or I can jam here and put hands like 10s or jacks in a tough spot. I've been pretty tight this session, so my range here should be perceived stronger than normal. With that in mind, I decide to go all in. I push 1750 into the middle, and he goes into the tank. He starts talking out loud, saying he doesn't think he has the right odds to call, and how close it is. After an agonizing 10 minutes, he lets out a big sigh and makes the call. We agree to run the river twice. The first river is good, it's the ace of diamonds, but the second river is the eight of clubs. I'm putting him on a hand like jacks or queens. I'm 100% expecting to chop this pot, but the unexpected happens. He mucks and says we're good for the whole pot of over $5,300. Not too sure what just happened. I rubbed two nickels and turned it into a quarter or something. Anyway, he does tell me he had the ace high flush draw, so maybe a hand like ace queen of hearts or ace jack of hearts. I got really lucky here and was actually bluffing with the best hand, and what a way to end this session. So let's quickly do a GTO breakdown of this hand. You can find the link in the description below for one month free of GTO Wizard and 10% off your first subscription. Let's begin. I opened this hand from the cutoff and the big blind actually three bet me. Now, because we are playing a straddle game, I'm just gonna assume that the small blind is the big blind here. So small blind three bets me and I end up four betting him and he makes the call. The flop was seven of hearts, five of spades and three of clubs. So as you can see here, the small blind should check his entire range, which he does. And when check two with ace king, I'm supposed to bet here a quarter of the pot about 66% of the time. In fact, um, GTO says that if your hand contains a diamond, like um, either the king of diamonds or the ace of diamonds, you should actually be betting more. And when your hand doesn't contain a diamond, you should be checking a lot more. I did in fact decide to bet about a quarter of the pot and the small blind calls. turns to five of hearts, and of course, he should continue to play passively and check to the aggressor, which he does. And here's where I decided to jam. And as you can see here with my specific holding, 
Um, GTO likes to check about eight, uh, 98% of the time and only showing aggression 2% of the time, but it's not really a true mistake because if I actually check the EV of the decisions here, you can see that the EV is pretty much the same for any decision here. Um, and you're gonna notice this a lot when you play around with the GTO wizard that any action that has a frequency will yield the same EV as any other action with a frequency not equal to zero. So upon me going all in, let's see if Villain actually made the correct decision by calling with an ace high flush draw. Now, uh, we don't know his exact holding. It could be a hand like ace queen of hearts, ace jack of hearts, or ace ten of hearts. Um, maybe even the smaller um, flush draws, but I believe um, it's not like ace five of hearts because he didn't say he had a pair He just had a flush draw and it, he had the ace of hearts So if he had a hand like let's say for example ace ten of hearts He's actually supposed to fold it as you can see here folding a zero EV calling here would actually result in a negative four EV um, big blind loss so if he did call with a hand like ace 10, it would actually be a mistake to do so. And that's where you can actually gain the EV that villain loses when he makes this decision. All other hands like ace jack of hearts and ace queen of hearts, the EV should equal to zero uh, because it's going to be a mix between folding and calling. After being down over $1,000 at one point, we are now walking away with $2,219 in profit. It was a long session and it's time for some rest.